When Johnny Enloe told Kat Curry he felt she needed to interview as Stephen Schultz for 10 straight days leading up to the 2020 presidential election, there is no way any of them could have ever foreseen what would follow. In the months after, it was as if an Elisha generation emerged and stood on the shoulders of the Elijahs that had gone before them. Shortly after the election, the Elijah Stream's video branch of the Elijah List ministry would quickly grow in viewership tenfold, featuring a whole array of prophets few of us had ever even heard of prior. In fact, it was the newest faces that quickly became the loudest voices, willing to take the most unwavering of stands. One of those was Donna Rigney. On November 5th, two months before her first Elijah Stream's interview, she posted this on the Elijah List abbreviated for the sake of time. On October 19th, 2020, the Lord brought me in the spirit and showed me what is coming to the world, especially to our nation. For those who have been serving him and following him, these changes that are coming very soon will be wonderful. Here are a few of the things he said. He wants us to call the harvesters forth because there is going to be a great harvest. There'll be much work to be done very soon. He needs us to come out of hiding roll up our sleeves and begin to disciple the newer ones. He said that great promotions are coming for those who have served him faithfully. He told me that this will be an hour of recompense and also that grand celebrations for righteousness sake will break out. I felt the Holy Spirit prompt me to share with you the following prophetic encounter. While walking in the Spirit with the Lord, I was shocked at what appeared before us. As we walked and talked together on the beach, in the spirit high above us and completely encompassing the shore ahead, I saw a monstrous ocean wave which was frozen in time. Jesus explained, This is what is coming to your world and to your life. When it is released and does hit, all it touches will never be the same. Listening to Jesus and drawing very close to him, we walked under this massive dark wave. It was so enormous and thick, no light could penetrate it. Darkness enveloped us, and as we advanced, it became a large canopy hanging in the air above us. He explained, Very soon this wave will appear for all to see and encounter. Encourage my children to stay close to me while the changes this wave brings falls upon them. Change will be bringing justice and judgment when it arrives. Those who have walked in obedient fellowship with us will only experience great good when change arrives. For those who denied us, walked away from our ways and followed the ways of the evil one. Change will turn their world upside down. Things that were hidden before change hits will be exposed for all to see. Shame will displace pride and arrogance. Ill-gotten wealth will disappear and poverty will remain. The acceptance of those they deceived will come tumbling down and they will only see the backs of those who leave them in disgust. A great wave of change is being released now. It will disrupt the commonplace and bring turmoil to the land. But for the sake of justice, change must be sent forth. This change is being sent in answer to the cries of my children for true justice. It will not just impact the noteworthy, but all inhabitants of the land will know change. All who listen to the warnings to draw close to us and to turn in sincere repentance from their sins will experience great wonderful transformation. Those who heard the cry to prepare for what is coming by getting to know me and refused will wish they had listened because the change that comes upon them will not be welcomed or considered good. While I walked beside Jesus under this massive dark wave, I felt protected and great peace filled my being. I was not afraid because I knew I would be safe and live blessed. Because of the size of this wave, I realized it would encompass the world, not just my nation. As we continued walking under this ominous covering of water, held fast in its place above us, Jesus said, Before change arrives, it is not too late for my children, who have ignored our warnings to repent, to turn to us and be forgiven. Then the change that comes to them will benefit their lives, he explained. Looking ahead, I saw that change went on for a very long distance. The further we walked, there appeared to be no end in sight. The Lord said, the change that we are sending to earth will be a long lasting change and it will impact the lives of my children for many years. Do not be afraid because it will not affect you in a negative way, ever. For those who are truly mine, change will bring joy. Many will have the desires of their hearts fulfilled 
destinies will be accomplished easily, as well as long-forgotten dreams realized. The following day, I heard the Holy Spirit say, These are the days of Elijah, days of great darkness and greater light. Yes, the light of my glory and goodness always snuffs out the darkness of evil. Jezebel knows her time has run out to rule over your land and is throwing a temper tantrum. Pay her no attention. Just continue pressing forward in faith and in prayer. You will see her and her puppets soundly defeated. Just as Jehu took her out in Israel, my Jehu will conquer her again. She and her doctrines will be destroyed. Peace will be restored as righteous rule is established in your land. Don't allow fear of the idle threats Jezebel is sending forth through her ambassadors to paralyze you or cause discouragement to back you down. This is part of the wave of change I told you is coming. When the Lord told me that Jehu would arise and conquer Jezebel, I knew he was referring to Donald Trump. Donald Trump will defeat the spirit of Jezebel that is manifesting through the liberal press and the Democratic Party. Great changes are coming to our land, and that will probably be messy for a while like the mess that comes from a tsunami when it hits. As these disruptive changes occur, we need to stay steadfastly close to Jesus and continue praying for the lost to be saved and for his will to be done. He will keep in perfect peace those who keep their thoughts fixed on him. Now for those who saw my first video series last year, you know this vision of a tsunami is nothing new. In fact, it was the cover image I chose to depict the entire first series. Now let me count the ways. In 1956, Lauren Cunningham had a vision of a map in which waves on the shorelines of the continents were growing bigger and bigger, covering the landmass. The waves then turned to youth that would sweep over the globe in a massive missionary movement. In 1987, Rick Joyner was shown two waves of harvest that were coming. Joyner later referred to that first wave as the Toronto outpouring, which started in January 1994 and the Pensacola, Florida Revival, which starred on Father's Day in 1995. Joyner then said he saw a period of stillness after the first wave receded to prepare the church for the next wave to follow, one far bigger than the one that preceded it. Joyner added on June 9, 2018, We are on the verge of one of the greatest events in all of history and the greatest ingathering of new believers that there has ever been. On April 11, 2018, Bill Yount added this, I saw the Spirit of the Lord as a great ocean beginning to recede off an enormous shoreline. This was a season and time when the tide was beginning to go out. The body of Christ was standing in the water, practically immersed in the tide. But it gradually started to go out. We began to feel exposed. It seemed like we stood spiritually naked as the tide was going out. Even the elect started crying, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Those on the shore, the world, stood mocking our nakedness. The time frame seemed like forever as though they were separated from God and nothing appeared but failure. Many turned back toward the shore and gave up on waiting and waiting, convinced that God had forsaken them by all appearances. But a remnant remained and stood still, waiting upon the Lord, confessing their sins, repenting and interceding for the world, realizing it is not by might, but by thy spirit. Suddenly, Young continues, there was a great calm. Then the Lord spoke, the tide is beginning to turn. The tide is beginning to turn. This is a tsunami of my glory that the earth has been waiting for. It was wave after wave. These waves were bringing in the lost from the deepest parts of the ocean. Porn stars, mass murderers, witches, you name it. The powers of hell were letting go of them. Multitudes were being saved as the waves of salvation continued to literally cover the earth. Finally, the Lord spoke. Truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, like the waters cover the sea. The day after Donna's word, Lana Vosser gave a similar prophecy. If you will remember from the third video in the original series, Lana had a dream in September 2016 in which Donald Trump was crowned the King of the Earth. Now, as you will see in the dozens of dreams that follow, dreams are typically far more metaphorical than literal, but only time will tell what that dream actually meant. On November 6th, she said, As I sat with the Lord this morning, watching the incredible battle that's taking place over the United States, 
I heard Psalm 2-4 resounding loudly in my spirit. He who sits in the heavens laughs, the Lord scoffs at them. I then heard the Lord say, justice is mine. There is going to be a divine demonstration of the justice of God that is going to be seen in the United States of America. The demonstration of the Lord's power and his justice to overturn is upon the United States of America. With my mighty hand I shall overturn the plans of the wicked, says the Lord. I then heard these words thundering around me. My people, you are about to see a major demonstration of the power of my prophetic voice in the earth. I felt such a strong sense that the voice of God was manifesting in the earth like never before, and it was coming in explosive ways. I began to see a united church that had arisen like never before, and they refused to move from the word of God and what the Lord had spoken. I heard their collection of voices thundering into the United States, and the word of the Lord was shaking the nation. It was thundering upon the land like a hammer. I then heard the Lord say, These are the days of my majesty. These are the days where I am revealed as the King of glory. I am stepping in to reveal my majesty, and that I am the one who laughs at the plans of the enemy. As Psalm 2 says, When the nations conspire against me in my ways, I am about to demonstrate my justice and there will be a major ripple effect of my justice in the United States of America. I am branding the United States of America with my justice. Let the days of justice roll on. I am coming. For the words of mere men, the pride and wickedness of men to come against my plan are going to come tumbling down. The winds of my justice are blowing. I am not only bringing justice now in this moment, but I am moving to overturn eras of injustice. As I continued to seek the Lord, I heard him say, My voice wins. I sense that there are other narratives being spoken, which are not in line with the narrative of God and what the Lord has spoken. The invitation to the church right now is to be ferocious in faith and focus upon what the Lord has spoken and the decree of God in the United States. Again, these words thundered around me. My voice wins. My voice will cause the nation to tremble. Again, these words thundered around me. My voice wins. My voice will cause the nation to tremble. Then the words of Isaiah 55:11 surrounded me. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I shall purpose. It shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The Lord said, Within my people I am raising up a roar of faith and conviction in what I speak. As my people partner with my voice and decree, the demonstration of my power will be seen, and some of the greatest injustices, hidden agendas, and evil will be overturned. The overturning will come with great shaking, but my sudden demonstrations of justice will be seen and seen swiftly. That same day, Chuck Pierce offered this perspective. The selection is playing out the way the Lord spoke. Below is the word that I gave in Chattanooga, Tennessee on October 11th, 2018. When you listen to this word, the Lord gave us clear instructions saying the next two years and four months would be like walking through a swamp. Now, you're going to need to put on your prophetic antennas and pay close attention because Chuck gets pretty metaphorical here. He begins, Walking through a swamp can be very challenging. You must walk very slowly and use some sort of projectile structure to test the depth in front of you before stepping forward. You have to know that you have a destination through the swamp, or you get disoriented. Every decision or step you take has great effect on the environment around you. Swamps create a different type of root system. Therefore, you must understand that the root structure you are dealing with is very different than the originating root structure. The swamp has created its own root structure because roots have to adapt to swamp life. If you drain the swamp, most of the roots would not survive. There are ways to drain a swamp. First, you have to find out the source of water that is creating the swamp, and then you have to block that source. As the swamp dries up, you will have to deal with each level of the swamp elements. In other words, as it dries, you will see a whole different world emerge. This world has many dangerous creatures, fragile vegetation, and an unsure soil structure for the future. The purpose of draining the swamp is to create a direct way to get to a new destination. Swamps are not insurmountable, however they are very dangerous. They also have many resources that have been covered over that need to be used for the future. This is a parallel of how we are having to walk in this nation. 
God said we would have to walk very cautiously through the third week of January. In other words, we would be tested all the way up to the inauguration, and then some. Over a year ago, at the head of the year 5780, fall 2019, Daniel Pierce, my son, came to me with a dream he had about Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. He felt this had to do with the election that we are now participating in. In the dream, Daniel was wearing a Philadelphia flat cap. He and one of his friends in the dream knew that there was a great danger in Philadelphia because of a criminal element that had infiltrated the city. Daniel had been given a legal warrant in the dream to arrest a violent felon and to bring him in. When he awakened, he knew there would be a fight against justice coming forth in Pennsylvania, and that state would become the battleground for the justice of this nation. Chuck continued, I just got the phone with Dutch Sheets. On Monday, he went on a prophetic intercessory journey to the headwaters of the Allegheny, which are in Pennsylvania. There he dug a hole, buried a mercy coin, tuning fork, buckeye from Cane Ridge, an appeal to heaven flag, and a key from Constitution Hall. We appeal to heaven for this nation to be retuned with mercy for revival to come. Now, if Dutch's prophetic act seems odd to you, it's going to make more sense in the videos to come. But just to establish historical context, let's start by examining the connection between Dutch Sheets, Donald Trump, and the word mercy. In late 2015, Dutch and two of his friends were praying near the White House when Dutch felt an angelic presence and heard the word mercy repeated six times. A few weeks later, another friend shared a dream in which she was told Dutch Sheets has tapped into the root of mercy. The next year, just before the election, a pastor and friend of his had a vision while watching his appeal to heaven conference online. Remember Dutch's prophetic act, including burying an appeal of heaven flag and a mercy coin. As they prayed, this man began to see coins rain down from heaven and fill the room up to people's ankles. When he picked one up, it had the picture of George Washington on the front with the word mercy written across it. And on the back was the flag, but not with its old nickname of Old Glory, but rather with the words New Glory. Do all these signs suggest God put Trump in the White House as a means of mercy? They would seem to suggest just that. But to be fair, we haven't actually seen any direct connection to the name Donald Trump yet. So let's go back further still. Before any of those prophetic experiences, Dutch had another friend share this. He said he saw a vision of Protestant reformer John Knox in the number 313. Dutch later came to find out that the presidential election the next year would fall on, you guessed it, the 313th day. Was this a foreshadow that Trump, whose middle name is John, would be God's chosen reformer? I'll let you decide on that yourself but I will throw out one more interesting fact before you decide. John Knox was Scottish, as were Trump's two great aunts who were instrumental in praying in one of the greatest modern day revivals, the Hebrides Revival in, that's right, Scotland. Finally, Chuck ended on this note. I also record a dream in the past of our prophecies called China, the president and the prophetic dream. The dream I had on May 6, 2020, was about docking a second ship, and is very, very key for our future. This was actually the first inkling I had about the outcome of the presidential election. It's going to appear that there is no way for Trump to get back into office again. However, there is a way if you can figure out how to reverse what happened and get the ship docked. Hmm, it reminds me of the Evergreen ship that got stuck near the Red Sea in early 2020. People are having all sorts of prophetic fun with that one. But we'll end this video with this question. In Chuck's dream, there was a second ship that needed to dock, one that was very, very key to our future. Was the second ship a metaphor for Trump's second term? If you're a dream interpreting whiz, that was a dumb question. Of course it was. If you didn't see that, no worries. You'll get a lot more opportunities to practice in the videos to come. What is God's agenda for America? Clearly, it's to get this ship to dock. Only then will we be able to unload it and see what's actually inside.